let's get to that top end at 15 billion over the next few years. What mix is that? COVID, RSV, flu, cancer? Yeah, so good morning and thank you so much for having me. So the respiratory vaccines, as you say, COVID, RSV, flu will be the bulk of it. What we still need to figure out is when do we launch the cancer product? We are very excited about the data. We need to wait for a bit of a more of a readout. I think we said this morning by the end of the year, we should have more data we will share. And that might be an interesting point to start talking to the regulator about a potential accelerated approval. Hmm. Stefan, good morning, it's Guy. Great to see you as well, though not in person. Uh, maybe next time. Um, let's talk a little bit about the risks to that, that upgrade. Are you still being cautious? Do you think there's potentially even more to come here? Kind of, as these drivers start to kick in, could, could this be a, a process where you kind of continuously are upgrading some of these outlook numbers? Yeah, so what we believe is the products are really working really well. If you look today, uh, the numbers are going up, which is what we expect. The, it's, a, it's a fall season, you know, we're going, going back inside. Kids are back in school, so things are going to propagate. It's like what we see with flu, as we've been saying all along. COVID is going to look like flu over time. Mm -hmm. People at higher risk are going to need an annual booster. We're very pleased that the FDA just approved in the US the booster you know, on Monday, CDC yesterday. I got a photo during the night that the first trucks were going to the pharmacies. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be the same every year. What we're trying to do now with the positive flu data is to combine flu and COVID. Mm -hmm. We have talked about it before yep. on your show, guys. Yep. We should have before the end of the year the COVID flu combined data, which should, if it's positive, go into a phase three next year for a potential launch in 25. What is the, down, the downside risk that um, the COVID vaccine becomes more cash burning than cash supporting? Well, at the current scale, I mean, if you look six to eight billion dollars for this year, as we've said, so you're in a profitable business when you have six to eight billion dollars of sales on the product. So it's going to be cash supporting. But this assumes that we're going to have the same kind of take up for the continued vaccines that we had before, right? No, actually, the numbers are much b b below. If you look at last year, we had around $18 billion of sales. So now we're saying six to eight this year. Okay. So it's coming down a lot because of vaccination rates, meaning not everybody in the U.S. is going to get their vaccine. Uh, so we think that if we have 50 million people, to give you a sense, flu last year was 150 million arms, those in arms. So if you get 50 this year, that's the 6 billion range we'll be at. If you get more closer to 100 million dollars, that would be the 8 billion range. And so out of the 6 to 8 billion business this year and moving forward, we think we can you know, generate cash. In addition to the 14 billion dollar of cash we have on the balance sheet, we should be able to invest in research and create this amazing pipeline. We think you know, 15 launches in the next five years. Okay, let's, let's talk about the next five years. Let's talk about the next 10 years as well. Looking further down the road, Stefan, where do you see the biggest opportunity now? Is it in respiratory? Is it gonna be cancer? How is the mix gonna change over time? So I think respiratory is gonna still be very big because once you have COVID, RSV and flu and then combinations, as we said, this is gonna be you know, a 15 plus billion dollar annual sales franchise forever because those respiratory vaccines are not leaving the planet. Mm -hmm. And those combinations, we believe technologically, you can only do with mRNA. So the protein players, people making egg technology, I think this is gonna go away over time. Then cancer. Cancer is gonna be very, very big because as you've seen in the data, when we add this to Ketudra checkpoint product, you have a very significant response. Let's go back to the data. 44% of reduction of deaths or recurrent of disease versus the best drug on the market. Not the average drug, the best drug on the market. That's in melanoma, in skin cancer. By the end of the year, we're starting lung cancer. We believe that everywhere where Ketudra works, it's gonna work. The other piece that I think is very exciting for patients is that, as you might have seen with Grail as part of Illumina, mm -hmm. there's more and more of a liquid biopsy, the ability to find little fragments of cancer cell DNA in your blood, just from the blood, blood draw. And we think this will allow us as a, as a society to be able to go earlier in cancer, stage one or stage wow. two cancer. As yeah. you know, most cancers become deadly when you catch them very late. Yeah. So if you could do an annual blood check, where in your blood you can tell you, hey, you have cancer, and we can make for you in 30 days a product customized for you. I mean, that would, that would be amazing. That, but that's where but who, cancer is going. But who's gonna pay for it? So just anecdotally, my mother got her RSV vaccine and it's not Moderna, but it was 340 bucks out of pocket. Uh, and she's on two types of Medicare. So who, who pays for it, who sets the price? 
So in terms of, of the, the RSV product, this should be reimbursed. I assume, and it's not my product, so I cannot speak no, for no, it. No, no, but, but in terms of like, is the government going to set the price for you? Is it the insurance companies? Or is it going to eventually have to be the, the end consumer? It's going to be the insurance company and the government. But if you think about the cost of keeping somebody alive with cancer today through multiple rounds of chemo, the loss of productivity, the quality of life, it's just gigantic for society. So if you can really get cancer caught early, the impact it will have on cost is, is tremendous. And that's where we think we are going. And that's why I think it's an amazing time in cancer right now, between yeah. the liquid biopsy and this type of technology where we make an individualized product that if I have prostate cancer and my brother has prostate cancer, he and I will get different molecules. Mm. We at Moderna, in 30 days, we make a different molecule that will be adapted to what my immune system needs so it can recognize the cancer and go eat the cancer cells. Wow. Okay. So much to unpack here. Do you need to be, do you need to be in the blood testing business? Is that something somebody else can do? I, how do you think, how do you, how do you see that working? Is there a possibility of a sort of obvious combination there? And, and in terms of that 30 days, I, just talk to me about where the next leap comes. Is it AI being plugged in and you getting faster responses? Can I just, how, how does this progress? Sure, so on the diagnostic, we don't need to acquire diagnostic companies. What we'll do is we'll move data. Again, it's the world of data, as you guys know well. Yep. We'll move data from the diagnostic companies who will have basically do your blood draw and figure out you have cancer, move that data to Moderna's uh, IT system. It's all in the cloud. And where we use AI a lot already pre chat GPT is the algorithm that picks the mutation I will get. This is the one my brother will get in my example. Mm. Uh, today, when we have cancer, we don't have one or two mutations, we have hundreds of thousands of mutations on the three gigabytes of letters in our DNA. And what we're trying to do with our system is to learn from what we're observing in the clinic that's working. So basically, in the current Moderna product, we pick 34 mutations of the hundreds of mutations I might have in my cancer. But what we're going to be able to look at is those mutations we picked for an AI systems, which ones are working, which ones are not working. So we can update the software and get a product that's going to get stronger and stronger. So I believe that 44% improvement I talked about before, over time will get better. Can we just end on, on the finances again? So you're mentioning that the pickup from other vaccines this year, six to eight billion. But I'm wondering, what you're talking about seems to be a, a lot of R&D also. What's like the price you need to sell your stuff for to make all of this work? Like, at, at what point does it get too hard for Moderna? I don't think it gets too hard because of the probability of success. If you look at pharma, mm -hmm. because it's an analog way to make drugs, not information like us, mRNA, 90% of the drugs in pipeline in the clinic fail. Look at where we are today at the beginning of this new age. So you have of a less platform. time to fail. You're Correct. gonna have less time to fail, which helps your bottom line. Is yes, I mean think about it. Three out of three vaccines working in infectious disease, three out of three rare disease having positive clinical signal, that's unheard of. That's not because we're smarter, I don't believe we are. It's because we have a platform using the same chemicals, mRNA, to code different instruction in your body, but the same product that we give you. And that's why the, the drug success is gonna be much higher.